Few things have generated more controversy recently than the subject of AIDS and dentists. What are the real risks to dentists, to health practitioners, and to their patients? What are some of the precautions that you can take? And where do people with HIV get quality dental care? Find out today on AIDS Vision. Welcome to AIDS Vision. I'm your volunteer host, Allison Arngrim. Today on AIDS Vision, we're going to be talking about HIV and the dentist. And with us today is Dr. Jim Formaker, who is the director of the Green LeBaron Dental Clinic of AIDS Project Los Angeles, and Roger Moore, who is a client of AIDS Project Los Angeles and the dental clinic. Welcome to AIDS Vision. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, Roger Moore is not, in fact, the British actor 007, no. but just <laughs> Roger. Right. So we'll Clear that. Do you get a lot of that? We were harassing yes, you about that bit. earlier. Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm always being asked to find the real Roger Moore. The real Roger Moore. Right. Well, which for, I am. <laughs> he is, in fact, the real Roger Moore. We wanted to clear that up now. Uh, Jim, could you explain for the people who have not heard of the, the Green LeBaron Dental Clinic what is the AIDS Project Los Angeles Dental Clinic and how it functions? Well, it's basically it's a free clinic for people affected by HIV, um, people who have symptomatic HIV. Um, and it's, it's just a place for, for people to get all facets of dental care and for whatever reason that they can't afford it um, in private practice or uh, they have difficulty finding somebody to treat them or whatever. And you've been with the dental clinic since 1986? Yeah, I started as a volunteer in 86 and, and became the director in 1987. And now how many people are seen at this point at the dental clinic? Is there a large need for this? How many clients would you say you have? Um, patients of, of record, uh, living patients of record, are, are um, we're in the range of, I believe, 1,500, right around there. And we have about a 500-person waiting list. Now, when you say a 500-person waiting list, these are people who cannot get in at this point. Right. We're bringing them in. It takes about three or four months to, to, to bring those people in, because we bring in about 80 people a month, 80 new patients a month. That's an incredible amount of volume. I mean, this is a small office. I mean, I've seen the dental clinic, and it's, a, it's <laughs> tiny. There's, yes. there's how many rooms are there? This is a tiny little Well, facility. it's now five operatories. We okay, used to so be out, out of a trailer that only had two <laughs> operatories, and that was very small, and we didn't have, have near the opportunities of, of, of providing the treatment that we have now. But but it's still a relatively small office. And you perform all the different facets of dental services there. Right. We provide everything. pretty much everything. We don't do lab processed crowns in terms of you know porcelain crowns, or we don't do cosmetic dentistry, but we do do everything. We do dentures, partials, root canals, crowns, things like that. Fillings, cleanings. Fillings, cleanings. The works. I see. You, you just winced. Did you, you have cleaning, <laughs> didn't you? Yes, I did yesterday, yes. <laughs> what kind of services have you been getting from the dental clinic? Um, well, I have a partial, and I had a broken it. You've... Yes, a partial plate. Partial Looks danger. good. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know. So I said, you have a partial? It's like partial yeah. plate. And uh, I had broken it, and they fixed it. They repaired it for me, got me a new one. And if I ever needed it adjusted or anything, I'd just give them a call, and they'll tell me when to come in and have it done. Now, this is an incredible volume of people coming through this dental clinic, and that's the thing that's been coming up a lot is that the discrimination against people with HIV from getting dental services, 
Is the high volume of people coming to the APLA dental clinic because people are being turned away from their dentist? Is this what is going on? It's really for all reasons. Uh, we certainly have a lot of people who, who get turned away from private practice. Um, however, because of the, no the volume of, of, of people that we're seeing and the n number of people on the waiting list, if people do have other resources, we do tend to refer them out to other practices that have places that we know will treat them and, and treat them in a friendly, comfortable environment. Um, so most of the people that we're seeing at the clinic now, although certainly not all, are people that, um, because of their infection with HIV, have, have used up a lot of their financial resources and can no longer obtain treatment or afford to obtain treatment so through private practice. people cannot afford it either. Right. Now, you mentioned a friendly atmosphere. Uh, the atmosphere for a lot of people with HIV at the dentist has been less than friendly recently. There's uh, a court case pending. There's been a lot of lawsuits. Certainly. What is the law as far as dentists having to treat people who are HIV positive? Well, the law has, has, has upheld dental offices as being a place of public accommodation and therefore it's protected under all of the, the handicap laws. And in Los Angeles County and in a lot of other cities and counties, um, there's a specific law pre preventing um, AIDS discrimination within places of public accommodation. So pretty much all across the country, courts have upheld that it's illegal to discriminate against people with HIV. Yet this actually takes place. People are being turned away in, All the in time. droves. Um, Roger, we were talking earlier. Would you tell us what happened to you uh, at your dentist prior to coming to Jim? All right. I went to a, a West LA dentist, and it was through private insurance. It wasn't Medi-Cal or anything. And um, I told him that I was HIV positive. Now, why did you tell him you were HIV positive? I felt it was my... Um, I. He was my physic, well, my dentist, and I wanted to, to let him know so that he could take the precautions that he needs to take. You know, I didn't want to be charged with infecting anybody, and it's, I believe I should tell my physicians and, and everybody, not that deals on me with the professional level as far as my medical, then they should know. But um, what happened after I had told him I was, I was HIV positive, he had put off what I was, what work I was going to have done, and um, told me to come back later. And next time I had come back, the nurse receptionist she opened up the window, and I was sitting there with several other people in the office. And uh, she goes, "Has your HIV status changed?" Well, it hadn't, but my heart was <laughs> down there. She I mean, announced I, this I, to I everyone was, in the waiting room. Right, it's as if she didn't care. Just I, I don't know if it was to hum humiliate me or if she was just. Ignorant of the facts. Just really you know, stupid. But it, it sent me for a loop, needless to say. And she asked if her HIV status had changed. It changed, right. Which is especially ludicrous since you know, <laughs> rarely do people's HIV status That's change it once it's already positive. It happened, you know. so you changed dentists at that point. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I didn't. Not you at stayed. that point, right. I um, went back one more time, and then after that, I wasn't told never to come back. But I could tell by the services I was getting that I wasn't wanted there. They just treated you badly enough until right. you went. It was the, the old stipulation, if they want you to, 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 they don't want to fire you from a job, they'll make you quit. You know, it's that type of thing. So there, there's a lot of that where people are not made to feel welcome, as well as the out-and-out -out cases of discrimination. Now, this panic that people have as dentists and health practitioners about treating people with HIV, what are the actual risks involved? I mean, I'm not hearing a lot of people contracting HIV from patients. What are the real right. risks? What are the needs? Um, you know, the risks are, are extremely low in terms of, of health care workers or, or certainly dental professionals um, getting an HIV infection from their patients. It's, it's, it's basically hasn't happened yet, um, as far as we know. Um, and it's it's you know there's lots of needle sticks that take place in dentistry. So there's the, there's those fears, which obviously mostly can be avoided by just being more careful. But even within all those those situations that have been followed of, of needle sticks, um, there still have been no cases of transmission of HIV through them. And so we're talking about a case that 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 you know I can't say there's absolutely zero risk, but 
Um, there's also not a zero risk of getting syphilis through dental treatment, of getting herpes or hepatitis. And people do, for example, through occupational exposures of hepatitis, people do die from hepatitis. Hepatitis is extremely common, right. actually. So, so risk is something that we already are dealing with to a certain extent. What I'm saying is that it's a minimal risk, and certainly one that, that is, is acceptable within the profession that we do. And then, of course, the panic right now for people is that there are people who believe that they are going to contract HIV from their dentist. That right. if their dentist is treating patients with HIV or the dentist has HIV, that they are somehow in danger. What is the reality? Well, the reality of that is, again, that, that if there is a, a, a small window of possibility there, it's, it's so small it's almost completely closed. And um, I think the risk is almost nil, basically. Um, we've now, you know, after this whole case in Florida that went on and all that, there have been in excess of, of 3,000 um, patients of HIV-positive health care workers who were doing high um, um, invasive procedures. And all those, those patients have been tested, and, and not a single one has tested HIV positive. So this is, we're looking at, at patients of surgeons who are HIV positive, and dentists who are HIV positive, and, and just the whole gamut of healthcare providers, and we're not seeing any transmissions of this sort. Now, what are some of the precautions that are taken at the dental clinic that people's dentists can take, that when people go to the dentist, they should be looking for the type of precautions you would expect? Well, what we do at the dental clinic is, is also what I do in my private practice and what all people should be doing in their practices because we, we no longer go along with this idea that you can identify the infectious patient and do all the precautions on them and don't worry about everyone else. We do what's called universal precautions. And it, it, what it includes are the wearing of gloves, masks, glasses, um, the proper disinfection of the operatories between patients, the proper sterilization of instruments, all those type of things that, that are, are important to protect everyone involved. All these things shouldn't just be to protect the dentist. They should be to protect the patient, um, patients from one another, and, and all of these things. So if you go to your dentist, if he's not wearing gloves, you might want to bring it up and ask him if he's heard. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if he has an idea that there are universal precautions. I mean, I don't really see a lot of dentists now who are not using gloves. Right. I think that more and more people are, however, I still hear stories of, of, of patients who go to their dentist and they're not, their dentist doesn't wear gloves and, and it would certainly be appropriate to inquire why the, the universal precautions aren't being done. And if, if the very basic things such as wearing gloves is not being done, maybe you should also inquire about how they handle their instruments and things And what like kind of too. care you're really getting in general right. if he's that far behind. I certainly would feel much more comfortable going to a dentist that treats people, that knowingly treats people with HIV and takes all the precautions and, and does everything properly and knowing that I would be safe being treated there than going to an office that is assuming that they're not treating people with HIV, therefore they don't have to take the precautions. I take my chances with the educated dentist. Absolutely. And uh, speaking of precautions, we have a little public service announcement we'd like to show you. that they're positive, and we talked about the dentist needing to assume that everyone could be positive, but some of the other reasons that you might tell your dentist you're positive, do they also have to do with getting care for specific dental conditions that are compounded by AIDS? Sure. A, a lot of the, the, the um, early signs of HIV infection appear in the mouth, and there's certainly 
oral signs and symptoms that, that do occur throughout the course of infection of HIV. And so the, these things oftentimes will need to have treatment. And I think that's important that a healthcare provider be aware of a person's HIV infection so that they can be aware that, that something that might see in the mouth um, might be um, exacerbated by the fact that um, this person is HIV Such positive. Such as what? What kind of conditions would someone with AIDS need dental care for that might be specific to their condition? There's all sorts of things. There's, there's thrush, there's um, hyaluroplakia, which doesn't need very much treatment, but this is one condition you might see. There's all sorts of ulcerations that can happen. There's herpes infections. Um, there's an HIV-associated gum disease, too, and that's the, the, really one of the most important things that a, that a healthcare practitioner or dentist should know why the person is HIV positive, because if you see gum disease in a person, it, it's usually very slow progressing in, in people who don't have HIV infection. But when somebody who is infected with HIV, it could be very, very quickly progressing. And so it would certainly change how aggressive I might treat something. So in this case, actually, people with HIV need more frequent and aggressive dental exactly. care. Exactly, much more. So here they are being turned away, and they actually need to be going. Oh, there's a lot of reasons why people with HIV need to have constant access to dental treatment. and. Unfortunately, because of all the hysteria that's been associated with this whole epidemic, um, the exact opposite has happened. Are there a lot of people with AIDS who are not receiving any dental care at this point? Definitely, definitely, for, for a variety of reasons, either discrimination or just the costs involved, too. Now, the care that you've been getting, have you had any specifically AIDS-related conditions involved in your dental care? Um, no, I'm pretty lucky, no. I, I know, just, we, we, we bothered you earlier because we, we said you, you had a partial, but I couldn't tell because it's, well, the work is... That's, yes, they do great work, and they're caring about it, and they spend the time with you to, to make sure that after you get it that it's adjusted right and it feels comfortable. If it's not, then they change it, and it's, nobody knows until now. Until <laughs> <laughs> so you came on television and showed everyone your teeth. America, yes, I have it. <laughs> so what you're saying is that people with AIDS, who are, if they're staying away from the dentist, if they're afraid of not really getting the good care, if they come to the, the, the LeBaron Green Clinic, that they, they will get quality care. This is, oh, definitely. This is the place and to the go. And the staff is like very friendly. Are they painless? <laughs> no. No! Busted! Right on AIDS vision. <laughs> no, they're not. But we can't guarantee it's okay. Yesterday. They try. They try. They try. We can't guarantee I don't know a dentist painless. that's painless. Well, I've had one or two. They're, they're, they're out there. You're, you're going to have to work on that. I don't, okay. We'll have to okay. get you up to the painless <laughs> dentist level. But this, but this is good. Um, how does someone become a client if they want to come to the dentist, if they want to get on the waiting list and try to get in? Uh, the, the first step is to call up um, AIDS Project Los Angeles, and they'll go through a, a screening process, and, and um, when they're going through that process, they need to tell the person that they want to become a client of the dental clinic and to get services there, and the pro proper referrals will be made. Now, when you say referrals, uh, people who are not going to this clinic are often referred to other dentists in private practice. Right. If a person just wants to find a dentist that will treat them, the hotline, the AIDS Project Los Angeles hotline, will uh, refer them to private practice. And also the other, other areas of, of APLA can make referrals to, to dentists who will be comfortable treating people with HIV. Now, are there a lot of dentists in private practice really willing to treat people with HIV in, in a friendly manner? You know, the thing is, I think that there probably are quite a few more than there used to be who will silently treat people with HIV. The problem that we've had with, with building up a referral list is that there aren't very many dentists who will openly treat people with HIV in terms of will put themselves on a referral list. That's something that we need much more of, is, is dentists will say, yes, not only will I treat people with HIV who come to my office, but I'll, I'll let people know that I will <laughs> treat people with HIV. Because right now, I think what, what happens more often than not will be that um, people will just silently accept people in their practice that if somebody who is a patient of record comes to them and says, I, I found out I'm HIV positive and I'd, I'd like to still come here, I think a lot of dentists out there will allow them to keep on coming. Um, but the problem is, is, is the, the opposite thing, is that there are a lot of people also who still get turned away from practices. Now, you have a private practice in addition? Yeah, I have a private practice in Toluca Lake. 
and you know, obviously, I, I would never turn away somebody who who is HIV positive. So you will take them both in your private practice and at the clinic, and, sure. and you've admitted to this. So it's, it's and, I, and I have admitted to this admitted actually to this on this television. television. On television. <laughs> so this is sort of also an appeal. So if if someone is a, a dentist or a, a dental assistant, and their office d is willing to accept people with HIV. Mm -hmm. uh, who do they get in touch with to let people know and get on the uh, referral list? Again, AIDS Project Los Angeles, the hotline keeps a, a referral list, and, and if anyone's interested in being on this list, please do contact them. Now, the people who staff the dental clinic besides you, is this a volunteer or paid staff? We're mostly paid staff now. We used to be, when I started back in 86, it was an all-volunteer dental clinic, and we have moved away from that as time has gone on, and our volume has increased to a point where we really can't rely just on volunteers because um, volunteers' lives are busy too and things happen where there's a lot of times they can't come into the clinic and we need to ha have a constant um, amount of patients being seen because there's quite a, a large need for our services. But dentists and dental assistants can also volunteer Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. We have a definite need we'll for volunteers. <laughs> definite I'm need curious, for volunteers. So if someone is known to be volunteering at the AIDS Project Los Angeles Dental Clinic, a dentist or an assistant, and it gets back to their private practice and they're not seeing people. Are you having any cases of dentists or health practitioners being discriminated against? None that, that I know of, to be honest. You know, certainly I've been involved with the clinic for years now, and, and almost all of my patients know of my involvement because I, I have things like this. I get on TV or I might be on the news being interviewed or things like that. So it's very hard for me, and I don't make any attempt to be to be um, secretive about my involvement with the, the clinic. And I've never had patients leave my practice. And mostly I have patients coming up to me going, I think it's wonderful what you're doing. And if anything, if you want to create uh, the idea of being a compassionate, caring, loving dentist, this is a perfect way of, of creating that illusion. <laughs> <laughs> the illusion? Um, <laughs> we'll tell people you really are. <laughs> that's right. We'll back you up. Um, it's, it's the greatest way of, of showing people that you are indeed those things by taking care of people who need it. Well, I would certainly go to you. I think this show will probably drum up good business for you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we can only hope. Um, is there any... Have you had other discrimination from other healthcare practitioners besides in the no. dentist? No. So it was mm -hmm. only the dentist? Only the dentist, yeah. And Look, you still see doctors in private practice? Um, well, I belong to Kaiser, so I so, go to the, the clinic at Kaiser, and I have a wonderful doctor there. And you've had no other problems? No. Now, that's something it's, I hear a lot, is I'm not hearing as many general practitioners and doctors having this problem of discrimination as the well, dentist. Well, this also happened, this was in 89 that this happened. So it's not like it was last month or anything. This was... 89 is still a little late. Yeah, true. <laughs> true. Although true, there but... was just a study done in, of L.A. County physicians, and they found that, that something like 50% would prefer not to treat people with HIV. And it was, I mean, it was a very significant percentage of physicians in Los Angeles County who, were, who participated in this, this questionnaire said that they would prefer not to treat people with HIV. So the problem is still out there. I mean, we need to, to educate people. We need to get the message out there. Has the, the level of discrimination dropped, I mean, since 86? How would you compare the level of, of panic now? I mean, on the one hand, things have progressed, but now we've had all the recent stories. Would you say it is better or worse, or is it in pockets? How would you describe it? It was, it seemed to be consistently improving. W way back in 86, it seemed like it was very, very difficult to find people to treat people. And now it's been progressing and progressing, improving all along. With this whole case in Florida, it sort of it upped the hysteria again. And so that people were scared, I think, of, of what their other patients would think if it was learned that they were treating people with HIV and their own fears and their hysteria increased through the whole thing too. So we saw a pretty drastic drop again in, in the willingness of people to treat people with HIV. Um, but hopefully it's just always improving. I, I, I try to be an optimist well, with, with regard to that. You came forward as early as 86. What prompted you to do that then? I mean, now people hearing about this and watching these kind of shows and seeing people like you will come forward, but how in 86, as a dentist, did you make that move? Well, in 86, I, st I still knew people who who had, had died of, of HIV, and, and it, 
it was something that that I felt I had to do something with. We were just it had been around for a while, but but it was still early on in the epidemic, and yet we were still seeing you know pretty large numbers of people being affected by this. And I just wanted to do what I could do to help in this epidemic. The same thing that I think brings most people forward who want to do something. Um, it just so happens that dentistry is what I was trained to do, and that's that's what was what was needed the most of the things that I could do. And so that's how I first got involved with it. Now, you did not go into any litigation against the dentist that you left. You just no, left. No, right. I didn't go to a dentist at all for probably a year and a half until I went to with um, APLA. So, that so I mean, totally avoided a dentist completely. You just did not I, get any care at all. Right. You know, because I was too ashamed. Well, I was, yeah, I felt ashamed and I didn't want that to happen again. I couldn't actually say I was ashamed, but I felt ashamed. But I mean, that's what the intent right. apparently of the receptionist was. What do you want to say to people who, who have AIDS, who have had this happen, who are HIV positive, who've been discriminated against at their dentist, who've been made to feel ashamed, who are avoiding dental care and getting any kind of help? Um, don't do it. Do get seen. <laughs> but um, try and find somebody that's sympathetic with with the um, with their condition, and uh, if if they're absolutely told that they don't want to see them again, sue them. Sue them. <laughs> Get them where it hurts. Well, th there are people suing right now, and we'll pr eventually in the news probably see the outcome of that case, and hopefully, the process of the lawsuit will educate a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, I thank you both for coming on the show, thank and uh, I hope that the people watching this will, you know, go to their dentist, help educate their dentist, help educate their friends, and come and volunteer and help you at your clinic. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.